it's been very difficult keeping this from you guys for the last few days. <laughs> but I I have not it said first it out loud. that thing that you said? Like, I, so I watch something. Yeah. I watch a thing and just, man. <laughs> so I'm assuming you're going to reveal it when we start? Yes. And it's okay. mostly because I want John's legitimate reaction. All right. Dude, I can't believe you watched My Little Pony. That's so crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Hello everyone, it is that time of the month again, time for Anime Club After Dark to pop a squad and hit you with all the best and worst of what we have been indulging in recently. I'm your host Alex, but you can call me Senpai, and joining me tonight I have our czar of source material, John. Don't mind me, I'm just reorganizing my desk while you're doing the intro. It's fine, it's fine. Like we're it's recording fine. an anime episode or nothing, you know, who cares? <laughs> Bro, I got, a, I, I got a new, uh, I got a brand new Ina stand for the background. <laughs> Where are the, uh, the cards? That. Uh, they're in the other room. I don't um, really have space for them here except right behind me, and I'd be covering them up anyway. Uh, true. I'll probably show them off on the next WTF, though. Uh, okay. Yeah. Video, we also have... Uh, what did you want me to call you? Tired of... What does this mean? Tardakura, What's tired of Kura man. mean? It means I'm tired of Kura. I've been going there so often. I ate there so oh much. Oh, my I'm just, God. I'm tired of it. Listen, I'm full sushi. of Kura. I am full of sushi. I love it. I love it. But man, when you go there again and again and again, it's the same flavor again and again and again. You get tired of it. Now, don't ignore ignore the fact that we did like a three hundred dollar bill. Like completely ignore that. <laughs> uh, for reference, for those who might not understand, Kura is a conveyor belt sushi chain here in the U.S. and Japan. Right? They're in Japan yep. as well. Yeah. And for those of you who don't know, Kura is considered like bottom tier, <laughs> for, like conveyor belt sushi. Just letting y'all know. And for those, and for it's... those who aren't food elitist, it's perfectly fine. Yeah. No, I don't think it's bad. Like it's way better than um other conveyor belt sushis I that used to be local around here. Like I'd rather go to Kura than. Sushi Land or um, Blue Sea Sushi. Sushi Land sounds like the most <laughs> made up place ever. It was so called American. Sushi Land. I, I have never. They've all closed down now. I don't think they exist anymore in wow. in Washington. Wow. Uh, and good because they were trash. But I did <laughs> like being able to eat dollar fifty rolls of like kapamaki because I'm like, Listen. dude, it's just cucumber, rice, and seaweed. Like, <laughs> I'll pay a dollar fifty for four pieces of that. It is cheap and it is ready. That's true. Just, just like little C it's the little Caesars of sushi. God, bro, Little Caesars was higher quality, not gonna lie. <laughs> that is that is saying Damn. something right there. Bro, we didn't uh, go eat sushi land because it was um like good. We ate it because it was cheap and it filled you up. <laughs> hey. It's fine. It's fine to do that sometimes. But yeah, um, it is time for our monthly dub again. Um, it the the newest anime season, uh, the summer season, has just started. So we're gonna talk about a lot of that stuff. Um, this time, uh, John and Chinoda are at least. I am not. <laughs> uh, Alex, and as our usual, host doesn't watch anime. No, I do watch anime. I just don't. Alex watch and Natai refuse to actually participate in the anime podcast that we run. This this By watching an anime. Lie. This is an absolute lie. I have a life and I don't watch 15 anime a fucking hour like you two do. Bro, it just like, it only takes 20 minutes a day, twice a day, seven days of the week. Are you telling me you can't spare 40 minutes a day to watch shows? Exactly, bro. Yes, I do. Wow. They're, just not, they're, just, they're just not current That's shows. That's a lie. <laughs> I do watch a lot of older anime, though. Um, See? Get with but, the times, old man. <laughs> because I have a fewer things to talk about, I'm just going to go through the three things I do have to talk about first, and then uh, we'll get to what John and Shinoda have been watching, some of which I have also watched. Um, and speaking of older anime... All right, what is this? I, 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 recent, I, I have been, I've been keeping this from you guys for the last few days, and it's very, very difficult for me. Um, I have told Natai, like, off off of the podcast because i knew he wasn't going to be here um after years and years of being told to watch it i have finally watched death parade oh my god it was death parade Woo! it fucking was Woo! what'd you think 
I have not know this, but I was guessing while I was playing Genshin, and I'm like, I, cr I correctly yeah, guessed it. Yeah. All right. Actually, so, all right, before, on first before, guess. No, 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 no. Uh, before he, like, breaks his arm trying to pat himself on the back, this is, like, his eighth guess. No, it wasn't. My first guess was My Little Pony, because you're like, you'll never guess it. I'm like, My Little Pony, and that was the <laughs> meme answer. Then, as I was playing Genshin, and I was, like, ruminating, I'm like, it's Death Parade. If it's not Death Parade, it's Kekai Sensei. And yeah, I was right. I, uh, I did finally watch. I finally watched Death Parade, and, and all I got to say by the end of it, man, isn't it good? Right? Oh my right? god! For twelve episodes, for for something that's only twelve episodes long, boy, does it hook you, and does it hook you good? See, if you like Death Parade, you'll love Kekai Sensen. That's you know what that might just be the next thing I watch because after watching this like God I I have been missing out man now I understand <laughs> I understand my eyes are open John I know he has now seen the man, light like <laughs> I know now what I have been missing and I have been missing quite a lot <laughs> I man this There's show a reason why we've been dick riding the show so hard. As as and you know what I was telling this in a tie when I was when I was talking about it with him. As much as I love like the whole thing with the main, I'm not going to spoil anything. The whole the like the whole thing I loved with the main character of Deckham. As much as I love that shit, right? I loved like the little stories with the people that come to the bar, and like learning their life stories and and how they died and everything. Like that shit. Yeah, it's cool. Like a, a quick TLDR of what Death Parade is like. It's it's purgatory, and you're being judged. Mm. Two people come yeah. to this bar, which is basically purgatory, and their souls must be judged. It's like, were you a shit person in life, or were you a good person? Yeah. And sometimes the answer surprises you of who's a shit person and who's not. And sometimes they're both shit people. <laughs> yeah, and so that's what like that's the show. TLDR. I mean, there's a yeah. different, there's another like thing in the background, like story stuff, but that, TLDR. And that, that's, that's and that shit, the uh, the stuff that's going on in the background, that shit is compelling as hell too. But I was almost, I think I was as invested, if not more, in learning about the lives of the people that come to the bar and get judged. Uh, because we as the audience aren't necessarily privy to that at the beginning of the episode, but by the end, we usually are. Okay, how did I you do... feel about the uh, the OP of Death Raid, though? Isn't oh, it amazing? the OP is a banger. <laughs> the OP is a straight up banger, certified hood classic. Like, not even, not, no, no shot. Like, certified hood classic. This this thing went to my like top ten anime OPs ever. <laughs> I hey, fucking you miss it, it out. I, that's why, like, I, for as long as we have been telling you, like, dude, you love Bakano, right? You I love... fuck it. Oh. You would love Death Parade. Like, this guy just does not want to listen. We're like, dude, as people who like Bakuno, we're telling you Death Parade is pretty good, too. It's, like, in similar veins of, like, wow, I really like this. And, you know, what? speaking of the OP, the, the OST, the score in general, fucking amazing. Like, the, the jazzy blues stuff in the bar. Oh! I, I'm fu I'm so fucking there for it. Also, this was at a time when Madhouse was like on its S tier, like God tier S -tier game. S tier Madhouse, yeah. I like the the animation, especially when the games appear that the people have to play. That animation is top notch. There's a there's also a toward the end of the like the back half of the the show. There's a pair of episodes where the characters that come to the bar have to play air hockey. And mm -hmm. that that air hockey sequences, the fucking amazingly animated man. I don't know. To, I have been. I gotta look up. I, mm -hmm. I think it's a anime original as well, right? I um, believe so. Yes, it is anime original. Yeah. I mean, man, uh, kudos to the person that wrote this because my god, is it good? Uh, just everything about this is so fucking amazing. My only complaint. My only complaint about this show is I wish there was more. I want to yeah, keep um, watching this. Like I get, I get that the thing that's going on in the background is done pretty much by the end of the show, but I could sit there and watch more and more people come to this bar and be judged. I so just, apparently, um, he's the same director that directed Mob Psycho 100. Oh mm. shit! Really? Mm -hmm. Damn. I mean, it's 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 amazing. Um, I 
so I'm, I'm curious like obviously you two have seen it so am, am i wildly off about anything like it no 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 did i get the I'm full death parade experience yeah yeah and i mean that's the beauty of it like it's an anime original um written and directed by same guy who did which today who is like a 50 50 proposition when you get an anime original it's either going to be good because it's a complete story or it's going to be shit because no one knows how to write I remember yeah, and, the like, first time I watched it, it was with my ex. We found it and we decided to start watching just because, you know, new anime and all that. Mm -hmm. And next thing we know, it was like middle of the night and we watched the whole thing straight. We were like, holy shit, that was amazing. Yeah, uh, I watched... Uh... I discovered Death Parade because I was on a whole Madhouse kick. And I was like, I'm going to watch everything Madhouse just because, right? Because yeah. <laughs> at the time, Madhouse could do no wrong. Uh, they, had, they had not spurned me yet with Overlord Season 3. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I was just like, I just wanted to watch it. I, I watched the first episode. I'm like, okay, this is interesting. Like, people coming to, to Purgatory and getting judged, whether they go to heaven or hell. This is kind of an interesting, like, who who are these people like are they shinigami like well, what's going on like there's there's a guy who kind of looks like buddha like what's up <laughs> what is this i also the games that they play are also pretty interesting too because usually there's some personal aspect uh from the characters that come to get judged that are like woven into the game like the the arcade game that they have to play during one episode like it's the two characters that get judged they're fighting as those characters mm -hmm. yeah um, the one, the old woman that comes to the bar has to play like old maid, and the the characters on the cards are characters she's created. Yeah, so I I really liked it as a concept. Uh, I wish there was more. Um, but that's also kind of the beauty of it when things are fleeting, <laughs> when yeah. things are when there's not any more to have. Like you appreciate it's, this even better. It's a succinct story. You can watch it in an afternoon, and it's it's great. It's. F I highly recommend it to everyone. Like I was telling the Thai, easy nine out of ten anime for me. The only thing I'm knocking a point off for is that there's not more. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie, but I get it. Oh, uh, but yeah, everything yep. about this is great. I'm. I'm glad I finally sat down and actually watched this. Maybe I'll do Kekai Sensen next, since y'all have been hammering me to to watch that finally too. Well, Kekai uh, Sensen is a a manga, so there is more if you want to continue, and there are two seasons. Yeah. Now, one question I do have, and I didn't actually get a chance to talk about this with Natai. So there's a a thing out there called Death of Billiards. Is that related to Death Parade? Yeah, it was the short film oh, yeah. that, uh, like, so the the guy who created Death Parade was like inspired by whatever to make the show. So he created okay. uh, Death Billiards first, kind of like, like a, a prototype. concept. Yeah, like two years. Like it was in 2013 that Death Billiards came out. I believe it's an OVA or a movie or something. Like it's not a it's not. Do you recommend checking it out? Series. Uh, I mean, it it has yes, it has some of the same characters like uh. Deckham is that the bartender guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it has him. He's in it, but I don't believe it has any relation to Death Parade, other than like mm -hmm. same concept and characters. Okay, I mean, I might check it out just for like completion's sake, because obviously knowing that now, this is where it came from. To I'd be like fair, to it also has version. been eleven years since I've seen Death Billiards, <laughs> so oh, I have. I, I, it's very. You know, can you remember things that happened like literally two years ago? Come on now. I've had yeah. many sleeps since then. It's been... I will say it's one episode. It's only twenty five minutes long. So yeah, I mean, like, yeah, it's. I mean, I might, I might just go find that and check it out just for completion's sake, like I say, uh, just to get a, a taste of where this came from. But yeah, I highly recommend this to anyone out there that hasn't seen uh, a Death Parade. It is on Crunchyroll. You know, it's um, funny when I was trying to convert my younger sister from being an, a normie anime watcher. To get her off of that SAO life. I gave her Death Parade. I was like, watch a good fucking anime for once in your life. Here, go watch Death Parade. So, <laughs> it is one I of the ones that I recommend to people that are like, if you want to get into good anime, go watch Death Parade. That That is one thing I will say. I, I don't think I could recommend this to just anybody. Like, I certainly wouldn't recommend this to someone who's never seen anime at all. Um, yeah, because this would set the bar too fucking high. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. 
Exactly. <laughs> like for anime, it's a secondary. Uh, yeah, I, I, I would you say can't, once you can't watched... start people off at the peak of anime because then it's all downhill no. from there. You're like, man, everything sucks exactly. in anime. Why? Why is there no other death uh, parade out there? And it's like, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, like, but yeah. Oh, you're new I, to anime? Watch Code Geass. <laughs> Yeah, you're you're brand new to anime. Watch Violet Evergarden and then cry oh, and then yeah. realize nothing will ever make you cry like this again. <laughs> Dude, Violet Evergarden's so good. I should it go is. watch the movie. Oh, God. I keep saying that. Why have I'm you never not gonna finished watch the we story? Just... Legit, we should we should legit do it because we've never done it. We should do a spoiler cast on Violet Evergarden, man. We've never the movie done and the series in one. The whole thing. We... Okay. All, the, all, all, all of it one. Well, if we slate it in, I'll be forced to actually watch the movie. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Jamie, put uh, it on the notes. <laughs> Jamie. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, so the second thing I wanted to talk about um, is not anime related at all, uh, but I still wanted to talk about it. The second season of Smiling Friends ended uh, a couple weeks ago, and man, the second season was so good. <laughs> I think that I. I personally felt like season one was a lot better than season two for Smiling Friends. However, there were definitely worse standout episodes of season two. Like, I fucking... John, I, I was just wondering Adventure. if you wanted to hang out with me and smoke weed and fill our bellies with diet soda and no, no, you have, you have to start I just have one simple question. <laughs> Man, that the whole that whole Al, the an Alan Adventure is the best episode. Alan Adventure the, was the best. I, I loved yeah. it so much. Just because how Zach Hadel does the the landlord voice. I'm like, I was just wondering if you'd want to go smoke weed and fill our bellies with diet soda. And play play Burnout uh, Revenge burnout to the PS2. PS2. <laughs> the way he says PS2 gets me every <laughs> single time. Why, yes, it was all part of my plan. <laughs> Organizing animatronics. Mine. <laughs> oh, dude, it's so dumb. It's so dumb. Oh. But yeah, and then, like I... the the callback to like Spanish. Like the reason why Pim understood those characters from season one is because he actually knows Spanish. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and how everyone in Spamtopia is voiced by the like the Microsoft Sam AI voice. <laughs> this show. I, I cannot express how much I love Smiling Friends because it doesn't make sense uh, how much joy I get from it because it, it's not like I want I, I said this last time but it's like it's like RAR XD 2000s humor but not it's not that cringe uh, it's just yeah. a funny fucking show dude like it's it's got funny zingers it's got funny callback jokes and it's just random shit that just happens on the screen that's not like brain rot random like Spongebob is nowadays it's just yeah. It's random, but not. I don't know. I can't, I cannot explain why it's so good. I, I will say you can enjoy this in one of two ways. You can enjoy Smiling Friends in two very different ways. You can turn your brain off and just laugh at the silliness and the abstract and the, 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 the crazy off-the-wall comedy. You can do that. But it does reward you if you pay attention because you get the, the callbacks like in Season 2. You find out that why uh, Pim could understand the fun twins in the Simon S. Salty episode. It's because he <laughs> spoke Spanish. Uh, well, he doesn't does speak Spanish, but he can understand it because yeah, yeah, he can understand his pen pal it. Oscar. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, I, I just want to say, like, it gives me a great amount of joy, also, uh, knowing that this has been a success for Zach and Michael, uh, because I've, I've, no, I've yeah, I know who they are. I've watched their stuff for many, many years, and I'm so happy now that they have this like mainstream success. And yeah, I, I think it's uh because. It's always been a difficult thing for um, YouTubers, content creators, and stuff to go to traditional media because yeah. Hollywood just still does not care if, like, if you have 30 million subscribers, they do not give a shit. Really yeah. uh, which is why, like, uh, Iron Lung from uh, Markiplier, like that coming out mm -hmm. and being financially successful, it would, it, it, a lot is riding on it, regardless mm -hmm. of whether or not it's going to happen. I don't know. Um, but, I don't know if Mark understands that. Like, I he, think Mark is just having fun. Yeah, and I I don't want him to have that type of pressure. Like, I, I'm they're done shooting it, and it just needs to be finished editing and then released. So I'll watch it. I'm gonna watch it for sure because one, I like Iron Lung, and two, like I I don't I, I, I'll, number one YouTube's number one himbo. Like I I'm su <laughs> I support Mark 100 percent in everything he does. Yes, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. So, but yeah, 
him being financially successful, at least Iron Lung being financially successful with him at the helm of it, is going to do quite a lot for YouTubers because of that. Because yeah. traditional um, entertainment media, they, they don't understand what that translates to. Like, because, one, there's so many social media platforms. Like, there's that one girl who's who had, like, what, 2 million followers on TikTok or whatever, and she had that fan meetup, and literally no one showed up for her, even though she has <laughs> 2 million fans. Yes, I remember like, that. I don't remember who that is, but I, I remember, remember that happening. I just remember seeing it on the internet, and I was just like, well, that's very sad, but it's because you can't translate media platforms over to each other. Like, I have yeah. 5 million Twitter followers does not mean anything to someone who has like 5 million YouTube subscribers. They're completely For reference, John skills. definitely does not have 5 million Twitter followers. <laughs> no. <laughs> Do I? What? Uh, Is it grown that much? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I, don't, you know, I, don't, I don't use Twitter, so I, I wouldn't have any followers. Um, mm. but, but the point is, depending on the social media platform where you, you are, you could be popular in your sphere, Yeah. but you would not be popular outside of your sphere. Kind of like yeah. the crossover between like TikTok famous and YouTube famous. Entirely a different. 30 things. million subscriber TikTok channel versus or follower channel versus a 30 million subscriber YouTube channel. Completely different leagues. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, there can be crossover, but this doesn't necessarily mean there's going to be crossover. Yeah, I mean, there's you... you know different algorithms on different platforms and stuff like that. There's more successful style of content because you know YouTube. It seems to me that longer uh, format content on YouTube is doing a lot better nowadays. You know, I remember the days when short 10 15 minute videos were the meta so you would release like a gameplay series of 30 parts of 10 minute segments and it was ass now yeah. it's like no we want to see all this shit in two three hours just get it done yeah i mean i i for for myself because i i've always loved those long form video essays that have always been on youtube uh i love it when i see someone i i I enjoy who does that release like a five hour video essay on some very niche obscure topic. Oh, it's yeah. like, like, all I, right, I am ready to lock in for these next five hours. What do you got for me? Yeah. Shit, when, I, when I'm looking for a video, it's like, Oh, what's that? It's, it's less than 15 minutes long. I don't want to watch this. Like that's not enough time for me to do what I need to do. Unless it's a <laughs> tutorial for how to do something in a piece of software. <laughs> yeah. Then I want it to be short, sweet. Yeah, <laughs> the shortcut should not take me 50 minutes to learn. <laughs> yeah, but like I, I give you a good example. It was about a year, year and a half ago. Uh, there's a, a YouTuber I follow. His name is Let Me Know, who did like a two hour long video on Jack the Ripper. For those two and a half hours, I was fucking locked in, man. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, tell me everything, you know, I, let me know your theories. Who done yeah, it um, with Zach Hadel and um, Michael Cusack? 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 Cusack. Cusack. Cossack? Uh, I'm, no, he's not a Cossack. No. I'm really glad that they've been very successful with it. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I hope that they, along with Markiplier, show the rest of media, like entertainment media and Hollywood and stuff like that, hey, there are very entertaining people online that you should invest in. Yeah, absolutely. Um and then they're a grifter, so you shouldn't invest in. But that's a whole other story. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we'll wait for the H Bomber guy video to drop about the uh, <laughs> turned TV grifters. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, that's gonna be amazing. And about how they all plagiarized. <laughs> uh, you yeah, I, YouTube. Yeah. Um, yeah. Super congrats to them. Not I am plagiarization. A it's transformative content because I talked over the video. <laughs> yes. Okay, Hassan, calm down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah super kudos to zach and michael and also uh while the second season was airing we got confirmation that a, a third season has been greenlit um uh, by adult swim so uh, see you in two One thing years I will everyone say, though um <laughs> adults like smiling friends is right up the alley of adult swim style humor oh, you know? yeah because i think of like i think of super jail i think of um trying to think of the another wacky metal Squid billies Squid Squid Billies, yeah. yeah. like all these just outrageous shows that just kind of exist in the sphere of adult yeah. swim and i'm like this is just classic adult swim to me i, I love shit like this I, I feel like i feel like it being on adult swim definitely helps it because it feels at home there i feel like if they had tried to do this anywhere mouse, else if people remember that 
Yeah, I feel like if they had tried to do this on another channel or another like programming block, it might not have worked. This shit would never have worked on no. another channel other than Adult Swim, in my opinion. Because like, I yeah. what's the other channel that could pick this? Possibly pick it up, like Comedy Central. Like Comedy Central yeah. to me is way too safe mm. for that, and their only outlier they is used to South be good. Park. I, I mean, they used to Netflix. Be yeah, but then it they would wouldn't die promote it. Yeah, they w- it would die too quickly. Yeah, um, I yeah, I feel like Adult Swim is the perfect place for it. Um, and Adult Swim promotes the hell out of it too. Well, I mean, I like, mean, there's also um, yeah, like Adult Swim is doing the uh, they'll while season two was airing, they would air, I think like two or three of the same episodes from season one. Just on a twenty four hour loop, <laughs> yeah. streaming on YouTube, and I'm like, what yeah, the hell? on YouTube, <laughs> yeah, they they had like the same three episodes just on a twenty four hour loop, and there were people that were just in there for hours at a time, just fucking in the chat every just time, the- quoting all parts. Yeah. I just wanted my cheese. cheese. <laughs> oh, I can tell you one thing: I definitely want to see in season three of Smiling Friends. We've had a Charlie centric episode, we've had a Pim centric episode, we've had an Alan centric episode. Give me my goddamn gleb centric episode you fucking cowards <laughs> what would that be he'd just be sitting there all day <laughs> oh what a way with words <laughs> all right and the last thing i, I want to talk about uh which this will probably be quick um the second core of the spice and wolf remake has started airing and it's got a new op and boy is it good john oh my god i was <laughs> we were together in la and I was like, oh, I haven't watched the newest uh, episode of Spice and Wolf yet from like a week ago. So mm-hmm. I started watching it and I'm just like, oh, they did, they're doing a new OP. And I'm just like, is that, is that Aimer I hear? <laughs> oh my God, it's Aimer. Oh, and I, I listened to the song. I'm like, oh, this is a really good song. Oh my and God. I want to say for, for you, Chinoda, and for everyone who's listening or watching, I have to say, so the way this went down, we were in the hotel room and John just scrolling through his phone and he's like, oh. Spies and Wolf's got a new OP, and he's like so nonchalant about it. He starts playing, and he's like, "Yeah, you can see, you can see in his face, it's like something sounds familiar." And then he gets like fifteen seconds. He's like, "Is that Aimer?" <laughs> As Alex is trying to go to sleep, and I'm like, oh, "Alex, have you watched the latest episode of Spies and Wolf?" I'm like, "I'm, I'm an episode behind." <laughs> well, they, they they're doing a new OP. It's by Aimer. It's really good. To okay, man. Good the night. Whole context of this: They went to the Dodgers game that had yeah. the um, the whole live night. The yeah, the yeah. whole live night over in we uh, we, we were in L.A. Yeah. We were in L.A. during Anime Expo. We did not go to Anime Expo on the the anime podcast. So <laughs> no, we really are rebels. <laughs> Look, there you've been there at once. AX that I wanted to go see. You've been there once. You you paid the toll of your sins. Listen, <laughs> I have said mean. it before. I will say it again. They call it a once in a lifetime experience because you only want to go once. It says like <laughs> we were in line with someone who's like, oh, I've gone for the last ten years every year. This year it's like really stacked and really good. I was like, that's good to hear. I'm still not like gonna go. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> Listen, and my problem my problem with Anime Expo is not necessarily the fact that it's Anime Expo. My problem is the location they have it in. That convention center is not big enough for the amount of people that show up. My problem could have been solved with money, but then they got rid of those um, VIP tickets, so it can't be solved with money anymore, so I don't want to yeah. go. <laughs> <laughs> my problem yeah. is that I had to wait more than two hours in line like to get, like... Yeah, well, like a fucking peasant. You would have to line up at minimum two hours if you wanted a shot at getting into any type of event that was popular. Like, yeah. for the ones that were really popular, like Violet Evergarden, Tokyo Ghoul, you had to line up four hours beforehand, right? Yeah. And that is an issue. When you buy the $1,000 VIP ticket, you get to go into the VIP line 30 minutes. So you could actually plan your day of like, oh, I can go to more than four events in one fucking day. Yeah. Instead of wasting um, quarter of the day on a single event. Yeah. Yeah. And then no rough. guarantee that you'll get in. Yeah, no guarantee. Because uh, because show went five hours early to the Tokyo Ghoul thing, and he couldn't even get in. See? Told you. Uh, but yeah, and it was the, for the live-action movie that sucked ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, in hindsight, was it a good thing? Maybe. I mean, Tokyo uh, Ghoul fans wanted to see, you know, if you're a fan of stuff, you always want to see the content regardless of whether or not it's good or not. Like, they yeah. don't, you didn't know because no one 
new yet because it just came out. And, so and let me tell you something: Tokyo Ghoul fans just keep on losing. <laughs> they had that announcement. They, they they teased that huge announcement for the anime's tenth anniversary, and it's just an art exhibition. <laughs> Which is cool, though. I think that's it's, a cool I mean, thing. Yeah, it's cool. And for the people in Japan that are Tokyo Ghoul fans, I'm sure it's great for them because they get to, a chance to go. And I'm sure there's like five or six rich Tokyo Ghoul fans that will fly over and see it. Listen, but <laughs> I made this joke the last time we talked about this. I think it was we were in L.A. when we talked about this, actually. Yeah. I made this joke uh, in the hotel room, but at least it wasn't a goddamn pachinko machine. <laughs> <laughs> Silent Hill uh, fans continue to lose to this day. <laughs> we'll never I, win. I'm sure we'll talk about our trip to LA on the next WTF. So, uh, to, so stay tuned for that. Uh, but yeah, th just finishing off what I wanted to say. I love the new Spice and Wolf OP. Thank God that this uh, new like remake of Spice and Wolf is actually good because if it wasn't, you'd be hearing so much fucking cope from me right now. It's not even funny. <laughs> yeah, that's actually kind of true. I mean, I, I if you say it's not that bad, guys. It's not that if you just close your eyes while you watch it, it's not that bad. <laughs> My potential issue with Spice and Wolf remake was the the horrendous CGI that I saw in the trailer, which is horrendous. But thank God it doesn't focus on any of it because that's not important to any of the story. Yep. Uh, everything else about it is great. It seems like this is being made as a labor of love, and I couldn't be happier. Uh, yeah. So yeah. I really like the music being done by it. I really like the new ED as well because yeah. look, I I like Claris. I like the old Claris better, but I like Claris. I did not like the ED. ED1 for Spice yep. and Wolf by Claris. I just was like saying it and ain't hitting. But the new Fair one enough. it's pretty good. It's pretty good. How do you, how, you know what you know what would be a really good like wink and nod to the the old fans of the anime would be when this when this anime adaptation ends, just have the final ED be seven apples on the witch's tree. Witch's tree. <laughs> Oh, no, no, make that be make that be like a lullaby or something that that Holo is singing in the final scene. There you go. I don't think anyone wants to. Um, what's the word? Collaborate? Talk about associate themselves with uh, a known drug user? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> Oh, right, right. <laughs> Maybe not. Anyway, uh, that's all I have to talk about for this monthly dub. So take it away, John. All right. Um. So, finally, I've enough, been hearing I, a lot about this. I I want to talk about Elusive Samurai. I think it's pretty good. Uh, this is the I one actually, you told me I would I would like, right? Yeah, this is the one that I didn't know was ha getting an anime adaptation this season. <laughs> I just picked oh, it up on bro, uh, Shonen Jump was, and was reading it. <laughs> this was in L.A. He's sitting there reading it and he's like, "Yeah, this anime or this manga is pretty good. You should read it, Alex." And I'm like, and he's, I said, "What is it? It's called Elusive Samurai." He's like, "Oh, that anime that's airing right now." He's like, J "What?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Literally on the uh, on that Friday, the day before the first episode aired, I was like, "There's an anime." <laughs> Dude, that's like ready. double that double take because he's like sitting there reading his manga and I say that like. He gets like a double take. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I did not know. Uh, so I got to watch the first episode as well. Uh, and I'm like, it was pretty good. Um, it, it skipped one thing. It showed it for like a second, but they didn't explain it, which I'm hoping they do in the next episode. Uh, which should be out the next Saturday. Because I think, yeah, it airs on Saturdays, I believe. Um, but... I, it's just a shame that it's going to take a while for the story to really get good because I'd say the first it's going to season one with how they're adapting it. I'm assuming they're going to get to the very first big conflict where it's like, oh, this is actually really good. Uh, it's going to be at the end of the season. So Ooh. I think it's going to be pretty rough getting there because the first 15, 20 chapters are really slow. World because building. it's all about like you know the elusive samurai is a it is a period piece it is about a certain um i'm not sure if he, he was an emperor it was it's about the to uh, the hojo clan um and a, sh a shogun no i don't think they were shoguns shogun is different shogun was military um hmm. i don't know what they're called the ruling people of japan at the time were this person's clan and then, like, overnight, they get betrayed by the Takauji clan and a bunch of other people because he, 
he aligns with the previous ruler, Emperor Daigo, and just basically murders everyone in the Hojo clan, except oh, this nice. one guy who comes back and is like, I'm going to fuck you up. <laughs> so nice. it is a revenge story, which I'm like, I love. And also, it's real. This is a realistic. This is something that happened in Japan. Oh, this is a real ass. Is it, like, yeah, is it crazy. based on a true story or is it like based on real events with fictional people? It is. It's a true story. This is the story oh, about uh, a shit. certain prince. Of I, a, um, I, you have, you have, you've yeah, pulled me in my successfully, interest. sir. Now there is anime bullshit in it because you know it's an anime. There's obviously going to be anime bullshit, but uh, I thought it was really entertaining. I think the story is really good. Uh, and like I said, it's it's a historical event. So if you like things like Vinland Saga, you'd probably like this. I will 100% check this out. But like I said, it's going to take a while to get to the actually really good part. Uh, because the beginning has to be like, so it start, the first episode is going to start you off with like, yeah, he, his clan gets betrayed and he's the only survivor. And then we're going to watch him basically learn how to cope with like Lost. the fact that his, you know, his family's gone. Uh, how, how can he get revenge? He's gonna slowly okay. learn how to get revenge by so utilizing his almost, powers. Is this almost a bit like a character study as well, where you actually just you're following this character and you get to watch him change? I wouldn't say it's a character study, more of a chronicle of literally this um this okay. the Hojo kid who upset all of Japan by being like, I'm literally the I was a nine year old kid and I came back and gave you a run for your fucking money for your the position of power. <laughs> like that's crazy, I, dude. A nine year old kid. <laughs> Bro, I'm 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 here for this. I will definitely check this out. You know, and you know, you talking about it being a slow roll. <clears throat> I'm okay with that as long as we get some like world building, character building, something along the way. Yeah, and uh, you know, I'm not well versed in Japanese history or anything, so I uh, fortunately I don't know how the the outcome of this event. So that that's what's good for me. <laughs> Because obviously, since this is based on something in real life, like if I looked it up and looked up the actual history book, I'll find out if he actually wins or not. <laughs> Funny thing is, like you're you're so used to manga being the source of your future knowledge, you have to open up a history book to have your future <laughs> yeah, knowledge here. Actually, I have, <laughs> I have future knowledge because I'm reading the manga and I'm caught up, but I don't have any knowledge based on the future events of this because I don't read history. At least Japanese <laughs> history, I don't. But yeah, it's oh, cool, man. Yeah, I I'm 100% uh, interested in checking this out now. Yeah, sweet. Right. Um, Noda. So I finally finished Metallic Rouge. Oh wow, what a show! Uh, first of all, overall, I did enjoy it. It was a good show, but that ending left something to be desired. Yeah. Yeah. So I. I had this complaint on our Studio Bones episode where I'm like, literally every studio or every Studio Bones work that is not touched by, um, dude, dude's name. Uh, uh, studio C. Uh, oh my God. Blade the Runner. The name guy. is, is, uh, the name is escaping me. Uh, Watanabe. Watanabe. Literally any show but done by Studio Bones that's not directed and written by Watanabe always ends like shit, in my opinion. <laughs> uh, they always start off pretty good. They've got good concepts, start off pretty strong, I'd say. And then the ending kind of just like... Pfft. And I was like, God, I hope that the new studio, studio, was it E? D or E? Whatever the new uh, studio, studio is. E. Studio E, which is the new one. Uh, I was like, God, I hope they don't follow the same trend as A, B, and D. C is okay. C actually makes a lot of hits. Like I was like Studio C from Studio Bones, uh, literally makes a bunch of like starting shonen shows. Like they are, like I I said it in the episode. They probably are the king of like beginner anime. They're the much. revenue makers. <laughs> we called we well the yeah we even called that episode where we talked about Studio Bones the king of gateway anime. Yeah, they they really are. They actually they have so much under their belt. Uh, and right now they have MHA. So yeah, they're they're slaying it soon to be over um yeah. but yeah a b and d have this problem where there's a bunch of shows that they have good concepts for but they always just end like just poop uh and uh, but i was like i was hopeful that studio e uh it would be different because the person directing this is watanabe but not the watanabe it's a different watanabe it's a watanabe but it not is a watanabe, watanabe but not the watanabe <laughs> 
Yeah, for, and... for reference, since John brought them up, so Studio C at Studio Bones has done uh, Full Metal Alchemist, Darker Than Black, uh, Soul Eater, or on High School Host Club, and is currently the uh, studio working exclusively on MHA. Like, big hitters, dude. Big hitters. Yeah. <laughs> they are not, like, Little League, all right? But yeah, with Metallic Rouge, I, I liked the beginning, I liked the concept, and then it kind of shifts towards the last, like, three episodes where they just start exposition dumping. Yeah. Just like, because, you know, Metallic Rouge is a, uh anime original. It was made to celebrate Bones' 25th anniversary, was it? Yeah. Yes. So, um, yeah. you know, that could mean a lot of things. You know, anime original usually means it's probably got a decent story, because usually anime originals are pretty decent. Or, at the, at the least, it's going to be a complete story. Yeah. And this was a complete story, because then they wrapped it all up in the last episode. I yeah. thought they were going to leave us off with a cliffhanger because I'm like, oh, that one person escapes and they still have all this other stuff to do. Nope. Literally in the last 15 seconds, they're like, oh, nope. It just, they, they fight and she wins. I'm like, oh. Well, that's, that's a shame. So, obviously, Shinoda, you kind of agree with us. The ending is a bit of a letdown, right? Yeah, Not unfortunately. It's, it's like, <laughs> like, the first Metallic... eight episodes are great. <laughs> Fantastic, even, actually. I would say the first six episodes or first five episodes are great then episode six it i believe episode six was the beach episode um might have been episode seven actually that was the beach episode but after the beach episode that's when it shifts gears into like all right now we're getting to the nitty-gritty stuff and then we're gonna just yada yada over a bunch of shit mm -hmm. and then we end the show um yeah i i feel like metallic rouge was a solid at least for me seven throughout the entire season and then we get to the last episode i'm like dude that was a fucking two out of ten if i've ever seen one like what the hell? I don't know wow. if I would say two out of ten, but it definitely it just doesn't. They just it, it's just so disappointing, dude. Just so disappointing. It is a disappointing ending for sure. I don't think it 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 knocks it down to a two out of ten for me, but no, 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 no. I'm saying like the if every episode prior to that was like a seven out of ten episode per episode. Oh, okay. So this would bring my average down to like six and a half for me for Metallic Rouge. Okay, that's that that I feel like is more fair. The visuals are great, like, throughout. Them. Oh, yeah. Like, the fights I... are awesome. Um, the voice acting, again, I loved the English dub cast. It was amazing. Oh, yeah. I, it was like, I, I actively preferred watching it in English than Japanese. Really? Have you yeah. watched the English dub, Shinoda? No, I haven't. Not at you all. should You should at least watch one episode dub just to kind of get it. Watch the first a, episode dubbed. You'll, it's, you'll, it's you'll, you'll really, understand what I mean. It's a really good dub cast. Well... I, I think I said this before, but I think it was made to be done in English because in the first episode, even in Japanese, uh, Sarah Fitzgerald, she sings in English. Yeah. The lady who sings um, in I, episode one. Yeah. Do you remember that? I don't... He's he's racking his brain right now. Are you, are you good, Shinoda? No, sorry. I was looking at it and I read it eight out of ten. And I'm like, no, I, I, I think I'll stand by that. You're going to stand by that? Okay. Yeah, because I still I mean, love the music and the... Oh, world. yeah, the music was great. Personally, I gave it a 7, seven out of 10, just because like the, the, the ending is a letdown, but it's still a visual feast. I love the music. I love the fights. Uh, I don't yeah. know. I just... I like the I like the feel, like the overall feeling of it. It feels very Blade Runner-esque. Yeah, and then it just devolves into complete gar garbage at the end. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, it yeah. does. Let's go away from all these themes that we've been talking about at the very beginning to just, like, this whole fucking family drama shit. If 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 the ending was, like, more narratively and, like, uh, thematically consistent with the rest of the show, like the last three episodes were, I would probably give it, like, an 8 out of 10. Yeah, I would rate it a lot higher than 6.5. Yeah. I can get that. What was the question you guys said? So I'm sorry, I, I was looking at. The I thing. like, but besides obviously the fact that you feel the similarly to how we do about the ending, like overall, what did you feel about Metallic Rouge? Because I love the beginning. Overall, I think I still do really like it because it was basically Blade Runner in anime form, and I yeah. really love that. Um, I enjoyed the characters a whole lot until we got to the family drama bullshit, which I'm like, eh. Right? Um, <laughs> like, what was this family drama shit that was happening? Like, what the hell? It's like, I, I was like, yo, just stick to the philosophical aspects that you've been carrying throughout the whole yeah, rest like with of the, the show. Yeah, that was the good stuff, dude. 
that's why I was so disappointed. Because I, because yeah. when you have such a good like, first of all, if you're gonna be basing yourself off of Blade Runner and shit like that, like this is a good fucking concept. All right, that's a I high love bar. that type of shit. It, yeah. It's not that high of a bar, guys. Cyberpunk I mean, 2077 did it, right? Yeah, I mean, it is a high bar in the sense that Blade Runner is one of the Rather. best sci-fi movies ever made. Edge, whatever, Edge Lords, the the cyberpunk anime, Edge Lords, Edge Lords, Edge Runners, Edge Runners, yeah, Edge Lords. <laughs> it was Edge Lords. I, I mean, it's pretty apt thing to call it too. If Edge Runners can take the concept and make it fucking just a beautiful story, I, I don't think anyone else has an excuse that they can't do it either. Especially yeah. if you're doing an, an original. Though yeah. to be yes. fair, with uh, Edge Runners, they did have input from CD Projekt Red and. They, they they did a lot of back and forth. Like, it wasn't just uh, Trigger being like, yeah, let's just do whatever. It's like, and no. And to be fair to Trigger, they also pushed back on some stuff that CD Projekt Red wanted. <laughs> the lolly stays. The lolly stays. stays. <laughs> it's, one of the, it's one of the, like, the most awesome, like, clap backs in anime history. <laughs> right up there with, uh, right up there with, uh, uh, not Miyamoto, uh, Hayao Miyazaki sending a fucking samurai sword to Harvey oh, yeah. Weinstein that just says no cuts on it. <laughs> Too bad he didn't actually use it. Yeah, no cuts. <laughs> no cuts. Oh, I'm oh. glad you enjoyed it, though, Chinoda. Yeah, I mean, I it, it's good it. for what it is. I mean, I would still a... recommend it to people. I'd recommend it solely for the visuals. Um, but yeah, John? Yeah. Uh, QA in another world has piqued my interest. Um, Bro, I fell asleep during the first episode. Oh, I, I was wondering why it was so lowly rated on Crunchyroll. And as it turns out, Crunchyroll has now disabled comments and reviews. <laughs> Our free entertainment <laughs> now is we don't gone. <laughs> so now people are upset and just kind of downloading everything to hell. Um, and don't forget, your Crunchyroll prices will be going up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna remove we're gonna remove features but charge you more <laughs> features that people actually like as well mind you well i don't know if like is the right word yeah no but they a were lot entertaining of like it a lot of people did like it because well, you got to have actual conversations uh it was a forum the comment section were a forum do you know where you can do remember that when you they do that used... on our discord server link down below <laughs> <laughs> remember when crunchyroll used to have actually a forum and people would yeah. post discussions. Remember Bro, when they used to have user <laughs> user profiles? I still remember my user profile. Pepper had Farm friends. Remembers. It was like a Facebook like social wall. It was actually more like uh, MySpace. Actually, now that I think about it, it kind of was. It was a wild time. There was I mean, a to be fair, a web based game that you could play. Do you guys know? Do you guys remember that? I do remember that. Mm -hmm. You collect like little hats and samurai swords. <laughs> to be fair, it did kind of come out of that same era of the internet with like where MySpace came out of. Yeah. So I mean, yeah, it's not an app. It's an app analogy. But anyway, but, QA in another um, world. QA in another world. I thought the concept was interesting. Uh, yes, it's an isekai. Um, but the concept is that this guy joins a bunch of his friends to do QAing in a VR world, and now they can't log out, and they've been in there for like years, and um the guy is trying to figure out how to get out of there and still doing his job as a QA. Mm -hmm. But also, he's trying to, like, break the world, I guess? So it starts off with, like, this village that he tries to save, and then um, it's a scripted event. The village has to die. And yeah. it's just like, it's like, oh, that sucks. Except now there's, like, there's a bug in the system where one of the villagers survives. And, like, it's like, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. there's the first episode. Uh, I definitely think it's boring in the sense that um most isekai have at least comedy or action like some driving force behind it to be like turn your brain off and enjoy you you stupid fuck <laughs> like enjoy your trash and uh, this one does I'm not have you, that I i'm glad you admit that about isekai <laughs> dude it's called isekai oh, sure. trash for a reason like i, I yeah I, I'm that's a what we love about the genre. Yeah, yeah, that's because like, it's trash. Like people have Keeping Up with the Kardashians. I have Isekai. Like what? <laughs> so, I I think it's an interesting concept of at least he's trying to break this world, uh, to try to figure out like how to save people from being killed. He cares <laughs> about these events. NPCs. <laughs> yeah, I care about NPCs. 
Um, I love my pixels, to be honest, more than real life people sometimes. <laughs> Very unfortunate, but that's just the way it is, I guess. It's he spends a lot of money on collecting certain types of pixels, too. <laughs> oh, I spend a bunch of money collecting PNGs, man. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's very true for us weebs. So, yeah, I, I just think that the the concept itself is it's not unique or anything like that. I've <laughs> This certainly isn't the first uh, isekai trapped in another world in a buggy other world, actually. In fact, I can tell you of two other ones. <laughs> airing right now uh one actually did have an anime and the other one is still just a manga but i believe it is getting an anime adaptation <laughs> so in fact i could tell you of two other ones but yeah I, I just think it's a fun concept it's it's a refreshing change of pace from just having isekai trash where it's like i'm so overpowered or uh i'm gonna get revenge on these people who summoned me here or I'm literally just super OP, but I don't even want to do anything at all, so I'm going to go farm. Which is fine. I like those shows. They're fun. But it's refreshing to see a different take on Isekai. Okay. I thought it was okay. Um, I'm going to try to give it two more episodes to see where it goes, if the characters grab me at all. But, like... I don't know if I was tired that day or if it no, was I definitely, cool itself, but no, I no, actually I, fell asleep. I think that the show doesn't have anything going on for it right now other than the interesting concept of this guy tries to save NPCs from scripted events but can't and then he feels bad about it. But then all of a sudden one of the NPCs that he tried to save all of a sudden is all now back even though they're not supposed to be there. And it's like, oh, interesting. That's it. Yeah, um, yeah. And that was the very end of it. At the, yeah. At the very so, end of episode one. I, I'm not sure if I'm going to give it the, the three episode rule. I might just like, I might just thug it out. I don't, I don't give a shit. I'll watch the rest of it. Cause it, you know, it is isekai. So <laughs> yeah. you can, you can practice your Nihongo. There we go. Yeah. Kind of. They use a bunch of, um, not Japanese words in it. Cause it's, you know, it is a fantasy RPG game. So. Alright. Yeah. Alright. Um what do I have next? Windbreaker. Oh yes. My God. I didn't actually get around to watching this until it was almost over. But holy shit. When I finally finally started actually watching it because um one of my uh friends was like, Oh, look at my uh new baby <laughs> and I'm like, Alright, what is this? And she's like, It's Windbreaker. I'm like, Oh yeah, that's that shit John's been uh harping about. So I was like, all right. Let, let Not me, just let me... John. I was talking about it a lot, too, while it was airing. And, and you. Um, okay, but I was the one who was like, man, you guys should check out Windbreak. Yeah, it was. <laughs> I will say, all right. Wait, hold on, hold on. I may, I, I may be a connoisseur of isekai trash, but god damn it, am I, am I amazing picker of shonen, though? Yeah. <laughs> 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 like, I started watching it, finally, and I was like, oh, okay very good first episode i kept on watching i'm like okay this is really fun i tried to keep on going but then i looked at the time i'm like four episodes in it's midnight i'm like oh fuck i gotta get to sleep but like i knew i knew i was tempted to not go to sleep to call out just so i could keep on <laughs> watching more of this amazing show that shit dug its hooks onto me so quick so hard I don't know exactly what it was, whether it was the uh, sound, the animation, the characters themselves, or if it was just a beautiful combination of all of it. But holy shit, it got me good. Yeah, I was in like I I remember when Spike's family was airing, Natai was saying like, because I kept saying like, oh yeah, it's Wit Studio, like they're killing it. But he was like, dude, you got to give props to Cloverworks, like they they did a lot of the work, and I didn't know how much Cloverworks. Uh, worked on Spy X Family and how much they made it look good. And then I watched Windbreaker, done by Cloverworks, by the way. And I was like, holy shit, they are an outstanding studio. They've put in a lot of effort in this fight. The fight sequences, the animation. Dude, yep. episode one? Like, holy shit. Like, yeah, they use reused the frames because it's in the OP. Um, that like, entire fight sequence in the OP song is that mm. first fight scene in the first episode. So, yep. Uh, but it still doesn't change the fact that it's fucking fluid as fuck. It looks amazing. Uh, and the, the sound, sound is amazing. During the fights themselves. 
holy shit, it was. And beautiful. that's not to yeah, mention even sounds. the best part of uh, Windbreaker, which was the story, which actually got me. Yeah. Because I, I, like I said before, I got into Windbreaker because I was like, I'm out of shows to watch. What should I watch next? Hey, this is a funny named show, Windbreaker, and it looks it's like about farting. Che- <laughs> yeah, like fa <laughs> fart joke. Uh, but I, I looked at it. And I was like, is this like some? battle power like shonen like whatever like ah whatever it's if it's shonen slop i'll watch it i don't really care i I like shonen slop uh and then i watched it i was like okay this might not just be shonen slop this seems to be having a a deeper effect on me and then as i watched it further and learned more of the story i was like all right this is having a very profound effect on me because like i can relate too much to the main character i can relate (laughs) too much to the themes that's happening in this show and i'm just like god damn this is a good fucking show it's like yeah it's your typical shonen it's about the power of friendship but it's also about teen angst it's about finding it's found family trope um you know, just being able to fit in with people who accept you for who you are and basically not being a shit person. And I'm like, dude, oh, man, <laughs> I was hit. So this hits here right here. I will, I will say uh, I kept on watching it. And uh, the whole time I kept on comparing it to Tokyo Revengers, which is yeah. very a lot of people did. in aspect. Yeah. Because it is very similar in aspect. And I'm just like, this is just a better version. Like, exactly. No yes. Time travel <laughs> no, he's I, I mean, John, yeah. John, he's not wrong. <laughs> Everyone said that. Everyone in the comment sections for Country Rule was saying, because, all right, I also thought the same thing, because I was like, hey, I know of a battle uh, manga style, or a, a battle shonen show that's set in, like, middle school, high school. It's called Tokyo Revengers. Also found family trope and also fighting and stuff, but none of the time travel bullshit. And this one was a lot. And it's, better characters. I, well, I didn't expect the story to be so um, deep. And profound like i thought it was just gonna be about people fighting originally uh it, it there is fighting and i wouldn't say that it or rather one of my problems with the show was that i think people would hate it because it kind of glorifies fighting but it's like it's mm. not that it glorifies violence and fighting so much as it is like you know as as guys as angsty teenagers really it's hard for them to communicate and sometimes you got to communicate with your goddamn fist. I mean, I just want to, I want to, st- <laughs> I, I want to stop you both right there and say some adults can't communicate with shit either. <laughs> it ain't just, but, it ain't just angsty teens. Well, they just yes. go shoot up a school for that. Whoa. Oh my God, Shinoda, why? <laughs> Anime it's Club after guard does not endorse anything this man has just said. <laughs> Yeah, I'm glad that uh, everyone that has watched it, Alex and you now, uh, have enjoyed it as much as I did. Because again, I just don't pick losing shonen. I just I, I can't. I believe <laughs> I believe Natai also told me he watched the first two episodes and he liked it. I think. Okay. I, think he, I kept telling Natai to watch it because I was like, Natai is gonna love this. Yeah, I think if I remember right, that's what we were talking about. Where he said he watched the first two episodes and he really enjoyed it and he wanted to finish it off. But yeah, I think it, for at least the three of us here, am I safe in saying that Windbreaker was our surprise hit of the spring season? For sure. Yeah. I, I mean, oh so, yeah. I I didn't know how popular the manga was because I believe when we were doing the summer preview, it was like ranked number three or something in anticipated yeah, anime coming out. Three or four. So it is a. It was very popular. I just, you know, <laughs> when I see popular show on list, I go, it can't be that good. <laughs> <laughs> well, either that or it. It could be popular for several reasons. Either the person that's making it, or the studio that's yeah, making I mean, it, or whatever. There's, you know, I, I don't like to believe the hype. Like, there's a lot of shows that people are like, like MHA, where it's like number one for the season. And I'm like, yeah, it's MHA, season a billion. All the casuals are gonna watch it, man. Listen. It's good that they have a show that they like. It's, there's nothing yeah. wrong with the show. I may not like the story, but other people are eating good, so who cares? <laughs> I'm just Listen, like, I, all I'm going to say about MHA is that I have seen Shonen come and go, and as far as fan bases go for Shonen, it's not so bad. I mean, the MHA fans are less annoying than some other Shonen fans. Uh, that's I would say the fun. AOT fans were a lot more annoying, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, look at the Dragon Ball fans. Most annoying fandom ever. I I mean, I think the original fandom, like the OG Dragon Ball, like Z fans, they're all right. I thought uh, you were going to say the OG Dragon Ball fans. Oh, like, yeah, they're in their 60s oh, now, on, man. 
Dragon Ball was amazing. Dragon Ball Z fans, that's who I hate. Okay, yeah, that's fair. That's I mean, there's some... Could Super Saiyan 4 Goku beat Saitama from One Punch Man? <sighs> fucking power scaling, man. But yeah, it's, getting back to Windbreaker, it's like, I was shocked at how good that was. Because I don't think any of us, when we were doing the season preview, thought it was going to be as good as it ended up being. I don't think we even talked about it. I'm pretty sure Did, none I, of I, us... I, I, I think we, someone mentioned it, I think. But I could I be wrong. I don't think so. I have to go back and check, but... Because, um, uh, again, I came across it and just said, saw Windbreaker, haha, funny fart joke. So that's why I watched it. <laughs> thank God I mean, did. <laughs> yeah, thank fair God enough. I did. Yeah, great uh, show. Great opening song by, um, was it Natori? Natori? Yeah, it was a bop. It was. Yes. Amazing. Honestly, probably my favorite aspect uh, of that was uh, outside of the. Uh, fight animations themselves the impact sounds of the fighting it was so powerful and it hit hard and i love that so i especially want to shout that out for windbreaker john was right we did not talk about it on the spring preview however natai was going to talk about it had he been able to be on oh um. word all right uh john your shitty robot anime Wow. Listen, I don't listen to your opinion because, you know, I'm married and you're not. Um, oh, damn! Yeah. <laughs> wow! Oh, okay. Okay, I'm, I'm walking away on that one. <laughs> uh, so, my wife has no emotion is as good as I had hoped it was going to mm. be. Uh, I know that Chinoda, he's not here to defend his opinion, so he didn't like it. He says he hates the main character. And I'm like... The emotionless girl or no the main character the guy the husband oh gotcha gotcha um the <laughs> so the story of my wife has no emotion is a guy falls in love with a robot and i talked about this in the preview yeah. uh i read the manga i like the manga i think it's cute um it's about a guy who falls in, he's awkward as hell and he falls in love with a robot and then marries her and Mina is so damn cute. Oh my god. <laughs> the things that she does because she's like, I want to be a good wife, but also she's a robot, so she doesn't understand like what being a good wife is, other than like, well, Webster's dictionary defines <laughs> wife as <laughs> Yeah, so it, it's just funny. It's it's funny, cute interactions between an awkward guy and uh, an awkward robot, <laughs> uh, to be you know, honest. I, I I don't remember if I brought this up during our season preview or not, so I'll ask it here. And if I have brought it up, just tell me to shut the fuck up. But um there's a movie from several years ago called her and it's got Joaquin Phoenix in it. And he falls in love with like this artificial intelligence, like assistant. Mm -hmm. uh, is it sort of like that? I've never seen that. Um, so I can't tell you. Hmm. Uh, this but is definitely it, it, more of a comedy, a rom. Like it, it is a rom com. Oh, okay. Because there's rom. Like, <laughs> is there a romance? He falls in love with an appliance. Like, let's be honest here. But I mean, uh, fuck it. There's people that have married Hatsune Miku. I mean, come on. Yeah. I think the reason Chinoda doesn't like it is because he sees himself too much in the MC. So that's why he's just like, <laughs> oh, I hate the MC. I find him annoying. In the MC. You Bro, came I don't back at the like the MC. Time. I don't like him. He's such a fucking loser. Holy shit. Yeah, so you do see yourself in the MC. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's why he wow. hates it so much. <laughs> wow. I'm sorry. I, we're piling on, on Chinoda here. I feel like I feel I'm bad. I'm seeing but... you in a couple weeks. Don't forget that. <laughs> <laughs> and this man can pick you up and throw you around. How to cancel. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think uh, Alex is having fun because for the first time ever, he's not getting dogpiled on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So it this is what out. it's like on this side. <laughs> <laughs> no, no uh, I understand your uh, your gripe with the MC because he is annoying. He's supposed to be a loser. That's the point. He's he supposed, isn't to... supposed to be. He is. <laughs> yeah, he he is like that is the point. That's why he falls in love with a robot. But the robot's also awkward, just like him. And it's about the cute interactions between him and the robot. Like that's that's the entire point. Um, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, because of how cute she is in her Mina monotone is ways. Fucking hilarious! I love her. Yeah, and it's like she shows personality, even though it's so wig and it's. Have you seen the second episode? Has... Yes, I have. So, like, when she's like, uh, "Is it Takumi? Is that the main character's name? Main character guy? Is Takumi or Tak? Yeah, it's. I think I it's just Takumi. remember him as Loser Kun. 
<laughs> so uh, Takumi, she's like, Mina is showing off like, I have a refrigeration inside of my stomach. And then Takumi's like, wow, that's so impressive. And she's like, I can also use it as a uh, heat thing to warm up. In fact, I can make you an, a hot spring egg, Takumi someone. It's like, oh, you cute little awkward robot. She's like, because she's uh, happy that she's impressing her husband, Takumi. And then it's yeah. just like, it's just so funny. Uh, it gets I kind of want to check this out there. now, mostly because it it irks to notice. So, <laughs> it, it's not even the show itself; it's just the it's just main the main character. character. Like everything else, I'm like, okay, this is fine. Like it's nothing stand out. I would call it a B tier, C tier anime at most, but like it's not horrible. It's just yeah, I really want to watch it just so I can like it and call it S tier, just to <laughs> piss him off, just to piss him off. I this is exact. Now I understand I why you all love goading me so much. <laughs> <laughs> Alex has been hanging out with me too much. He's learning my ways to, to being a professional hater. Because yes, you hate it, I love it. <laughs> I, will, I have to make a note of this. To, I, I gotta watch this, and yeah, I have to uh, force myself to like it. But. What I was saying while you were gone, uh, it is everything that I expected it to be, and I do like the manga, so I'm okay. fine with it. I don't find the main character to be annoying, but like, awkward. <laughs> well, he is annoying because he's he's awkward and and a loser, but that's the point. So it's like characters like that can <laughs> still be interesting, though. Well, when a character is written and it's they're being portrayed as how they're supposed to be written and presented mm -hmm. as. I, I enjoy that. Like, if I watch a villain who Fair I enough. absolutely fucking detest, and it's like, wow, this actor did a great job because I absolutely hate this man. <laughs> I, yeah. I'm i going to keep on watching it. I will say that. But I don't know if I, if I will like it. Like, the cute, maybe sentient robot is what's keeping me mostly on the hook right now. Well, you'll be glad to know that it's all about her. It's not actually about the guy. That 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 works for me. I, who knows? Maybe he'll redeem himself for me. And maybe I'll start liking him a little bit more later. I don't know. I mean, maybe he'll realize that he too can get a robot waifu one day. <laughs> Bro, if I could get a robo maid, I would. I would be so happy. That thing's gonna yeah, be I know. so I sticky. See, I see the yeah. I see the mess in the background. You would be <laughs> extremely happy to have. Yeah, you would be extremely happy. All those clothes. He doesn't want a wife. Look, he wants a I mom. Finished the laundry last uh, this morning, and like I just jumped on the bed before we had to go out to Kuro. I'm gonna tell you, Chinoda, I can't tell by looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, moving on. Please let us talk about Tower of God. No, let's not and say we did. <laughs> I'll, I'll 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 keep it short. Um, please. There's a time skip. It looks and sounds better um uh, i'm kind of looking forward to it now just because uh you know maybe finally revenge arc my maybe my man actually has some balls now um you want me to tell you what happens i can tell you what happens <laughs> no 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 let, let 500 let me, chapters later <laughs> let me not care and then i'll let you spoil it for me that but is the for now. right way to look at it <laughs> For now, I might care a little bit. So let, 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 let me experience this journey a little bit more. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna keep on watching it. I don't have high expectations. Uh, anyone who's watched first season, yeah. Listen, Anyways. roasted, roasted autumn chestnuts or whatever his fucking name is on the fifth of <laughs> October. Um, that's his name. That's his name. That's not a joke. His name in Korean is like. 15th of October roasted like, chestnuts. It's like some Naruto shit. being named after a fish cake. I'm serious. That's his name. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably not his actual name, but it's close enough. That not, and I really don't give two shits. <laughs> um, I, I dropped the manhwa after a while because it has it suffers the same problem with most manhwa. It takes too goddamn long for anything actually interesting that I care about to happen. Not to say that there's not interesting things that happen, like with the uh, the princesses of um, what are they called? G G. I was about to say jihad. jihad but no, I think it is jihad. I think it, it is. is jihad. I yeah, right. Jihad. I was like, it's... yeah. Well, 
I gotta look this up. Is it actually uh, jihad? I'm pretty sure it's jihad. No, it's not jihad. It's jihad. Oh, like okay. I thought it meant jihad like a holy war. No. no. Um, because that would be weird. Let's... Anyway, there's these princesses in there, and they have a bunch of story stuff. And I'm like, that's pretty cool. That's pretty interesting. Don't care about that. Go back to um, Roasted Chestnut Boy. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, nope, we're going to focus on all these side characters that ultimately don't matter to Roasted Chestnut Boy. Because he is the main character. And then something happens in the manhwa where I just, like, absolutely lose my shit. And I was like, I hate this. I'm not reading this anymore. Um, I won't say what that is. Because, obviously, you know, the for spoilers. The fuck faction. What? The Fug Faction. Fug what? Faction. Yeah. Is that what it's called? <laughs> no, there's a, there's a faction called Fug. F -U -G. Oh my god. <laughs> what is this fucking anime? Anyway, um, I, I'm i surprised it got a season two. I'm pretty sure season one performed very poorly. And I believe Crunchyroll is the one who is producing this show, right? Or rather, I think they're, they... on, they're on the production committee. I think they're the ones funding it. Um, it was a big deal that Tower of God got published because I was like, oh my god, we're finally getting Manwa as anime. Like, this is... <laughs> Everyone, yeah, just this... calm down. It's finally happening. This, Everyone, this... staying the fuck calm! <laughs> if, I'm, if I remember correctly, I know for a fact they came out in the same year, but I think the same season as well. The first season of Tower of God and God of High School. No, God of High School was after Tower of God, I believe. But it was the same year, was it not? Yeah, I think it was like a season after or two or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. Um, that people were like saying, "Oh my God, this is going to be like a new thing for anime. We're going to get these manhwa yeah. adaptations now." And yeah. like crickets. <laughs> well, and then they started adapting a bunch of like bad manhwa. <laughs> I wouldn't say bad, but like Noblesse Oblige, I believe, got an anime adaptation as well, and no one talked about that. Uh, I didn't talk about it because I didn't care. I mean, solo leveling now. Solo leveling was pretty hype. It's still pretty fucking hype. Um. I can't wait for season two for solo leveling because finally yeah, we're same. at like <laughs> we're, we're, we're finally long. <laughs> listen i told you from the beginning yes it, it is a manhwa so it takes forever to start up but it takes half as long as a traditional manhwa that's everything so, else yeah so, so like, i actually read it instead myself. of 200 chapters yes actually though like yes. it actually is like condensed in oh, it's, terms it's of jihad yeah, yeah it's okay. jihad the princess thank of thank jihad god Thank God, thank God it's not jihad, because that would be weird. Uh, I was like, I don't remember it was a J E H A D, and I was like, that seems like it's too similar to jihad. So pretty from, sure they wouldn't what, say that. From what I've heard from people who read solo leveling, the second season is going to be where the story starts to really pop off. So. Yes, yes, it does. And by people, you mean me, because I'm the one who won't stop shutting. I'm gonna shut up me. about it. No, hey, I think I, uh, no, you don't get server, that. You were yeah. after. I was in after. I don't care. I still read it though. In our in our Discord server, Classy Ulysses also reads it. He's the one that also right. he said it too. That he said the second season is gonna like really pop off. Yeah, we finally get to know his power. Like this entire time for season one, we don't know what his actual power is. Season two, you're gonna know what his power is, and it's like, oh wow. Well, and, no, they revealed it at the very last episode. Yeah, the uh, arise. Yeah, but they don't explain it. That's what I'm saying. You don't know what it actually is. Oh, He's right, saying we're right. going to get an explanation in the second season. Right, right, right. Either way. Anyways, anyway. moving on. Can we stop talking about Tower of God and talk about literally anything else? Yeah, sure. I'll tell you about the new Edgelord anime of the season. I'm so disappointed. Failure so, frame. Uh, failure, uh, failure frame. Failure frame episode you one. You failed. <laughs> As was... for your name. Task failed successfully. I think episode one of failure frame was all right. Uh, I didn't hate it. I thought it looked fine. Um, it's your typical revenge story. And then episode two comes out. And I watch it. And I'm like, oh. Oh, God. Dog <laughs> water CGI. Absolute dog water CGI. <laughs> they they change so much of the designs in the CG for the characters and shit and the monsters. And I'm like, what the hell am I watching this? What is this? Like, I understand you have to save budget here and there and make choices, but oh my god, why would you pick that? Why is that what you would pick? Yeah, and it looks like it's going to be a continuing theme of, like, when he fights things, that it's going to be in CGI. Oh, that so, is unfortunate. Um, 
Even it, in it is the very first episode, you saw a little bit of it. Just a little bit of it. Second episode, it was the majority <laughs> of it. And in the preview for the third episode, it looked like it's going to continue. Uh, yeah, that's it's it's a shame that they don't do the CGI any justice, and that they ch completely changed the design on a bunch of shit. And I I was very disappointed with that, like the monster designs, for example, like the Soul Eater in Episode Two. It doesn't it's not supposed to look like a kid. Wait, what? Yeah, really? it's not supposed to look like a kid. Yeah. It doesn't look like that. Unfortunate. The chicken <laughs> monsters and the cow monsters, they don't look like that. Wow. I am yep. even more disappointed now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. That I'm, is like, not good. I was drawn in, and I'm sure John was as well, because it's a revenge story. And I was like, yeah, let, let me... Let me hop on board for this. It's going to be fun. Yeah, uh, I recommend, if you don't want to watch the anime because the god-awful CGI, go read the manga. The manga's pretty decent. Or go read the light novel, whichever. Do whatever All you right. want. Um, I, I'm i thinking about dropping Failure Frame, to be honest, because I was just so disappointed with the, the CGI and stuff. John dropping something. That is shocking. <laughs> I know. I normally just tough it out, but I this is just like... There's nothing it, in it. It has to me. have... For, for John to drop it, it has to have no redeeming qualities because John will watch the shittiest anime on in existence as long as it has a good OP. If it has a good OP, he'll watch yeah. the most god awful anime you've ever seen. The, Bro, even the music the OP is and ED for this is just whatever. I don't. Is this is this the show that has Malay do the ED? I don't think this is the one, right? Um, I don't even quick. remember who does it. This might be the up. one that Malay does the ED, and it's a good ED, but. Even that's not enough to save the show from being it's bad. Good. I don't think <laughs> it's good, bro. Uh, well, it's because like the story of self of failure frame isn't anything outstanding. Um, the fight scene stereotypical clip, revenge story. Yeah, it's like there's nothing actually outstanding about it. So why would I subject to myself to everything subpar compared to like the manga? Uh, the answer to your question is no. It is not Malay. Okay, okay then. It's not Malay. I think there's an ED this season that's being done by Malay. I'd have to look it up. I don't know. Uh, perhaps. The ED for uh, Failure Frame is called Prey by Hakubi? Hakubi? Oh. It might be the ED I'm thinking of, and I just thought it was Malay and not Malay. Who knows? Not going to do... I'm, I don't care about the anime that much to do research, so whatever. Uh, yeah, I, I will give it one more episode because... Um, I want to see what Saris looks like. Uh, oh, uh, elf girl. Okay. <laughs> I want to see what she looks like, but I mean, you see her in the ED and it's in CGI. And I'm oh, like, we saw her for real. A brief second. second yeah, yeah. But I, I just want to see like how they do her with the, like how she fights and stuff. Okay. Are they going to do, hopefully they do 2D hand-drawn, like actual animation, not 3D CG. I bullshit. doubt it. I doubt it. I, I just want to say, I'm on Mal. That's where I got the information about the ED from. And you know how Mal always shows you, like, recent friend updates? Yeah. Shinoda's my friend on here. And Shinoda has read 12 chapters of fucking My Dress Up Darling. Oh, it's more than 12. It's a lot I'm more than 12 now. <laughs> sure. Anyway, sorry. Anyway, <laughs> I just on. noticed that. All right, moving on. All right. Shikano kano kano kakosh dan dan. Shikano kano kano Gotta put the antlers on, damn it. I don't have antlers. What do you want? The stupid meme anime of the season. It's the anime of the season. I fucking love it. Bro, I called it. I've been calling it for weeks. Anime of the season. I think everyone is overhyping it. It wasn't that fucking funny. It was that fucking funny. It Fuck was you. Not. I love it. I, it's overhyped for sure. Oh, I mean, yeah, it is overhyped, but I'm I'm loving the journey. I love the fact that everyone in the community is so on board with the stupid random bullshit. It, it's literally stupid random bullshit. Go! <laughs> and everyone's like, yeah, fuck yeah, let's go. It, it is I mean, I like the that they're... I, I like that they're um, embracing the meme. Like, she-ga. Yes. She-ga. Yes. 
<laughs> it's like, what is this? What is this fucking show? <laughs> John, I have to ask. You say it's overhyped, but of the two Studio Wind shows airing right now, which would you rather watch on a weekly basis? <laughs> I rest my case. <laughs> I would rather watch this than East Guy Suicide Squad. Which is not bad. We'll I get rest to that. My case. It's not bad, but it's also like Suicide Squad, so I don't care. <laughs> yeah, which is entirely fair. But, uh, no, I mean, I literally tagged you in a meme uh, of the show, too, if you actually check our Discord. Um, <laughs> it is... The fact that this show has been uh, making memes and it's been spreading throughout for to the rest of the community, inspiring the artists to create more memes about it, I love that. This is one of those water cooler uh, moments uh, of uh, the anime community. I would... I wouldn't go that far. I find it's funny, but I wouldn't call it a water cooler moment. I I think it is uh, because there's been so much fun shit about this. Uh, like not in a deep engagement philosophical way. In a wow, did you see this fun stupid shit this week? Yeah, I did. Did you see the other fun stupid shit this week? It's been a lot of that, and I'm genuinely loving that. I would. I still wouldn't call it a water cooler thing. It's fun to talk about, but I don't know. Water cooler to me is like, bro, the new episode of Chainsaw Man. Holy fuck! I think. I mean, you take I, your I water feel like too seriously. It's definitely a community anime where, like, oh look at this anime, it's, it's so funny. It's an anime no. that's fun to watch with other people. Oh, absolutely yes. Like to get your friends together and watch anime with for sure. Yeah, I had uh, one of my monthly game nights with one of my friend circles, and um, I showed them the show, and they're like, what the fuck? And they're like, yeah, we're locked in. <laughs> and I'm like, good, we're, good. We're locked in. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm going to watch it just because like, I, I like comedy shows. Um, it's a shame that nothing could ever live up to the comedy levels of like Nietzsche Joe or... Uh, Oh. Daily Lives of High School Boys or Cromarty High. <laughs> like, actual shows, uh, comedy shows that I absolutely fucking adore. Bro, you're reaching too high. <laughs> yeah, your, your I know. bar for I'm comedy a... is so high right now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's that high. Like, these are the... Th this is my baseline of, like, this is a good comedy anime. <laughs> and uh, This is a good comedy anime. List, like, three of the best anime comedies <laughs> yeah, ever made. Like, <laughs> the best. <laughs> I don't know if that's true. I'll go on Ranker and see what the top 10 comedy animes of all time are, and we'll see. Fuck Ranker. Sh Paid chills. Um, that may but be no. true, but... <laughs> I'm actually not sure if they're paid or not. I, I don't uh, know. I, but... I don't. I'm, I'm just making fun of them. Yeah, we're just making jokes. <laughs> Legally, don't sue us, Ranker. Um, but... uh, no, I'm having fun. A lot of... The, uh, almost the entire community is having fun with it. Like... 100%. Please, dear God. Oh, dear God. Uh, go watch it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, I have found I'm a like... Ranker article about the best anime comedies ever. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, it's like, where's Alex with it? I knew he was Googling something. I could see it in his glasses. Um. Oh, my God. This is a terrible list, but okay, sure. Uh, The top five. I'll, I'll give the top five. <clears throat> sure. Number, number five, Grand Blue. Number four, Gintama. Number three, Konosuba. Number two, the oh, disastrous like disastrous life of Psyche K. And number one, One Punch Man. That's Goddamn a awful terrible list. list. <laughs> like, sure, those have comedy aspects to them. I wouldn't rank them as like a comedy anime, though. They've got Daily more Lives going of High School them. Boys is number eight on this list. See, that's respectable. That's respectable. Nichi Joe is twelve. That's not respectable. They're goddamn not... wrong. Cromartie High School is not even on this list. What the actual fuck? It's too old. People don't watch things past, like, 2006. Yeah. It does have GTO like, on it, though. How the hell do you have GTO? Oh, GTO's really good, though. I mean, it's GTO not just GTO is comedy, fucking though. amazing. It's not just a comedy, though. That's... No, it's not just a comedy, but the comedy in it is fucking amazing. All right, yeah. What the hell is GTO? Great, Great Teacher, teacher Onizuka. Ugh. <sighs> God, the fact that we have to explain that to people nowadays. I, you know, there was I, a, I, there I, was a time in space. It, there was a time in time in space uh, where <laughs> if you said GTO, everyone knew what you were talking about. 
Yeah. Nowadays, it's like, what's GTO? Grand Theft Auto? Like, it's GTA, no. you dumb fuck. Remember oh, I remember this. God, I, I, I was watching this when I was uh, but a week. The lit. kids are growing up, John, right before our eyes. <laughs> kids are wow. I take it back though. Cromartie High School is on this list. Twenty-two. Not respectable. Shocking. Not respectable. Ranker, do Not better. Not respectable. Do better. Get better taste. Anyway, don't just put things that on. are popular at the top of the list. Uh, moving on. Should we talk about Suicide Squad since we brought it up? Yeah. Um. Well, I've only watched the first Mitchell? episode. I have only watched the first episode of Suicide Squad. East Guy Suicide Squad. Okay. And I didn't know that Callie was doing the ED for this. Hey, so good for Callie, though. That was cool. That was cool. Good um, for her. I don't give a shit about her, I'll be honest. Well, fuck you. How dare I you also, disparage I'll... dad like this? <laughs> I also don't give a shit about Callie. Like, this is kind of whatever. Uncultured swine. <laughs> Yeah, I know. It's heresy. I know. Talk smack about dad. But anyway, um, it's not that I dislike her or anything. I just don't really care for her music. I mean, I just, I don't. Musical I taste don't. is what that, I like her music. I like her as a person, so. Yeah. I think as a VTubing talent, she's all right. I don't know. I've just never gotten into her. I don't, I don't think she's that great of a entertainer. She's not anyway, as entertaining to me as someone like, um, Corona is or something, but yeah, uh, Suicide Squad. I su I watched the first episode and I'm just like, well, that was dumb. Um, <laughs> I completely hate how they changed a bunch of shit about the characters, like Joker. I'm just like, they. I don't think they understand the <laughs> characters that they're portraying, and I, that might be a problem of like, um, a cultural problem, right? Like they're Japanese people. Like, how are they supposed to know how? Um, what's his name? Deadshot. Oh, uh, yeah. It's Deadshot, right? Who are we talking about? What are we talking about specifically? The the he black guy. Suicide Squad. Oh, Will yeah, Smith. Deadshot. Will Deadshot. Smith. Deadshot. Will Smith. Deadshot. Yes. Talking Deadshot. about Will Smith. Yeah. From Deadshot. the um, <laughs> Suicide Squad movies. Yeah, it's Deadshot, right? Like, yeah. I don't think they understand how Deadshot is supposed to be talking. Um, I don't think they understand the personality of Harley Quinn. They definitely don't understand the personality of Joker, but Joker is not important to Suicide Squad anyway, so who cares? No. Uh, at least not in the Isekai Suicide Squad. Um, I do love the fact that they got Clayface so beautifully. Like, they understand who Clayface is. They did do Clayface well. Um, but I just don't think it's that entertaining as an anime. Uh, it was said originally as a joke by me, saying, you know what? I think the Deer anime by Studio Wit is going to be their money maker this season, and they're going to go in the uh, red with Suicide Squad. This is seeming more and more true by the day. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, huh, maybe I don't have a power of just picking good shonen shows. <laughs> I will like, say one positive thing about Isekai Suicide Squad that I have seen so far. I like the design of the animated Harley Quinn in this more than I like the most recent animated design for Harley Quinn I've seen in DC animation. Oh, 100%. Oh, yeah. Like, Give don't me get more me Harley Quinn. Like, oh, God. Don't get me wrong. I actually do like uh, Harley Quinn's uh, design in uh, her own show. I do. And I think the show is actually really good. I, I love it. But, oh, my God. This design <laughs> the is Japanese better. animation is next fucking level in comparison. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it's not to say, like, the characters look good, but the problem is that for a lot of DC properties, it's not just, like, the character designs I care about. It's about the actual character, right? Yep. They've always had strong writing, in my opinion. So yeah. for that not to get translated properly is kind of a shame. Hmm. Yep. But, you know, I, I'll continue to watch it. Like, it's not like I hate the show. I just, after watching episode one, I was like, yeah, don't really... Don't really have too much high hopes for this. So there's not a there's not a strong hook for it at the moment, unfortunately. I hope that changes. Uh, but overall, I'm still gonna watch it because I do enjoy the characters. I do enjoy shenanigans of the Suicide Squad, even if it is repetitive and uh, what's the other word you would use for it? Same story. Um, the repetitive, boring. You said it. <laughs> yeah, it, you, I guess you said it. Repetitive. <laughs> Um, it's the same thing, but still kind of a fun thing. I'm going to go with it. Hopefully I mean, it gets better. <laughs> listen, any 
excuse to have more Harley Quinn art out there is fine by me. Like what? Oh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> bro, trust me, trust me. The artists have been working, and uh, like good. that. That's that's it's all good. you had to say. And I'm like, you know what? I'll I'll, I'll give it a pass. <laughs> the artists have been at work. Hell, John, you don't even have to watch the show. You can just enjoy the fan art. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Uh, so John, you finished reading Mashal. Yeah, tell us about the Mashal uh, so manga. I a couple of days ago, I'm just like, huh, I don't have anything to read. You know what I should read? I should read Mashal. And I, I was looking at it, and I was like, wait, is this is this not translated, like being published by uh, Shonen Jump anymore? No, as it turns out, Mashal just has only 162 chapters. 163 if you include the epilogue chapter. 162.5. Um, so I was like, oh, this is a really short read. That is concerning. Um, cause I really liked the first two seasons. So it's concerning when I see a show, it's source material get cut short. Cause there's plenty of things like that. Like, um, the freaking skeleton in another world one where it's basically Ainz, but he gets summoned as a paladin, whichever oh, that yeah. one is. That light novel got canceled and the manga. Oof. It got axed. So it, it ends pretty roughly. And it's like, oh, man. After only, like, I think seven or eight chapters or a novel, whatever thing. So that that's something disappointing. And in case anyone was looking forward to watching more of that, uh, I have bad news for you. <laughs> man, that's a shame. <laughs> it got axed. Um, but, yeah, so concerning to say the least. And then I, I, I read it and... I just kept reading it because I'm like, this is funny. This is stupid. Um, I will say, Mashal, from the beginning, never takes itself seriously. It's a very surface-level shonen manga. But I definitely enjoyed reading it from beginning to end. And I can now tell you that they changed some things from the anime uh, when they were adapting the manga, specifically in Season 2. Uh, they didn't change anything from season one. Like, literally, it was, like, almost frame by frame. Just everything was the same. Uh, but the in season two, they did change one specific thing, in the order of operations of, like, what happens. Oh. Oh, okay. what was it, if you don't mind saying, considering uh, what happened? So, in the end of season two, he passes the test, and it's like, hooray, I don't, I don't fail. But then it's like, they go outside, and there's a bunch of people who are like... Give us Mashal. He's a non-magic. He should not be here, right? Mm -hmm. There's actually something that happens before that. Oh. It did, they did oh. not include. And it has to do with the Divine Visionaries. Oh. Yeah, and I was just like, oh, they didn't include that. So I definitely know what Season 3 is going to be all about. It's going to be about the Divine Visionaries and like the, the next battle tournament arc. Because we're still in the um, Divine Visionary selection exam. This I believe this was the part that they just completed was part two because he fights um the guy who does music dio he fights dio <laughs> oh right 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 yeah um i okay. so you you finish the manga now yep and i have to ask i mean obviously you don't want to spoil anything here but um what do you kind of like how do you rate the manga like, kind of review do you give it overall like i said um my rating of Marshall from beginning to end has not changed. I think it's a very, very solid eight out of ten uh, anime so far. Okay. And if they keep adapting the manga with the same type of quality that the anime has done in at least season two, I will maintain an eight out of ten. Because, like I said, okay. the story is not deep, and as we get but more it's fun. towards the, but it's fun. And as we get more towards the end, it's more stupid, like. He can do that? <laughs> like, he can do that. <laughs> Just pull it out of your ass. Let's go. Like, it's fucking I'm... hilarious. Like... I, it's a, like, so I, I was hoping to get through, like, the second season of Marshall to talk about it today. I didn't get through all of it, but I'm a little over halfway through it, the second season. I have to say, so far for me, it's a... I won't say it's a huge upgrade from season one, but there's a noticeable, like, uptick in, like, the visual quality from yeah. season one um, um and i am guess thoroughly what? enjoying it you won't be disappointed because there's even more fights coming and it, they're just great. as ludicrous great it's not just mosh fighting it's not just uh mosh burn dead fighting it's it's everyone fighting that's great because i love what i've seen so far i'm looking forward to more 
uh, especially if we can keep up this this level of visual a uh, visual quality and also fucking that op Jesus fucking Christ <laughs> yeah a uh, creepy nut song that I actually do like <laughs> yeah <laughs> the only creepy nut song I've ever actually liked and downloaded uh, it gets in your head man get in my head man get out of smoke in my head man. <laughs> Even now, months later, I, I still listen to it uh, while... Oh, yeah, um, no, it's on my rotation for, yeah. like, my music, so I, I definitely yeah. listen all the time. I'm, I'm thoroughly impressed with uh, how much better Season 2 is over Season 1. Not to say that Season 1 was bad. Season 1 was great. Um, it just season one two, up itself, yeah. Yeah, Season 2 just... It, it goes from a 10 to an 11. Yeah, I definitely don't think the quality of the fights drops <laughs> can no. from in the manga and as i've compared the uh, anime and manga they've adapted basically everything other than yep. the order of uh, operations in literally the last episode but and i you know something else that that I'm, I'm really happy about for season two the english dub is just as good as the english dub for season one <laughs> i it just i only watched it, it in uh, japanese it genuinely sounds like they're letting the voice actors have a lot of fun with their roles like they're not they're not yeah. they're not keeping them to like a strict um, a strict script, so they are mm -hmm. letting giving them like a little wiggle room, and I I I don't know if that's actually what happened, but I feel like that is because sometimes the lines that they have don't necessarily match the lip flaps. Yeah. Honestly, so long as they're having fun and it comes out better, I'm fine yeah. with that. I really yeah. am, and, it, and it's it, not a it, serious it, anime. No, it's not, it, and it genuinely does sound like they let the the voice actors have a little bit of fun in the in the studio, so. That's always cool to listen to, when you can tell the voice actors are having fun with the role. All right, uh, I guess I will go for the final three that are on my list. Go for it, rapid fire. Let's go. All right, uh, Isla sometimes uh, hides her feelings in Russian. Uh, Feet. <laughs> <laughs> it was the first episode for a couple minutes. Calm the hell down. <laughs> Besides, there's the better girl. There's the incest sister. Listen, th this is so this you is say, but let me. I, I said this at the very beginning. How can this be an entertaining show of like, who's he gonna pick when we know who he's gonna pick? It's all. Of it's it. in the name. It's in the goddamn uh, title. Yeah. <laughs> like, so what's the point in having a selection of like this How who possible harem my god calm down bro, it's just fun side characters bro if i were going to write something like this i'd put the chick's name that's going to lose in the title the just to screw with everyone just to screw with that everyone that would actually be hilarious put the blue haired girl that's going to fucking lose <laughs> in the title <laughs> cuz yeah, we all know as, uh, if you got blue hair you suck as far as yeah this the losing haircut actually um as far as rom-coms go, this does not spark mm. joy. The concept alone does not spark joy. The preview did not spark joy. I do not care about this <laughs> show. It is now, trash, and it's not even good rom-com trash. Now, that's coming from the cold-hearted son of a bitch over there. Um, the counterpoint guys. feet! <laughs> the counterpoint <laughs> I hate this. I'm I can't in. continue. God damn it. Um, <laughs> I think it. I think it's fun. I like the characters. Uh, it's cute. It's not. It's not like the strongest show ever. It's not like the greatest thing ever. But I like it. It's cute, and I'm here for the. I'm here for the journey. Um, and it's being ranked pretty high by the community as well. So I'm a little bit surprised by that. But yeah, well, they the community also loved um, it's that stupid show. We just talked about it, Sona Biske Dolo. Um, oh, uh, my dress up darling. Uh, my dress, my up, dress darling. up darling. Yeah, yeah. The community and also you really hated loves that, that as well, and I also hated that. So, <laughs> so what do you know, John? <laughs> uh, I know that I'm not a kissless, lonely virgin. Yeah, that is. True. <laughs> oh, Jesus, <laughs> that is true. <laughs> You're not a K H H we. Yep. Kiss the oh yes, I, it took me a second. <laughs> um, listen, there is a very specific crowd of people that these shows are made for. All right, yeah, it's very specific. <laughs> <laughs> Most weebs, <laughs> yeah, for weebs. It's it's made for weebs. No, um, 
the Russian is cute, even if it is very jarring. Is from it, the, it's rough. Yeah, is it like from bad what Russian? I've heard, okay. from what I've uh, read of the people who can speak Russian or understand it, they're like, yeah, it sounds like a Japanese person trying to speak Russian. It sounds Bro. very bad. Bro, you want to hear the most nothing burger criticism I've heard of this show? What? And this has got it. It's either got to be some psyop that I'm not familiar with. I like I'm not familiar with your game, bro. Or it's got to be like people who are just trying to inject their own politics into this. It's like, why is she speaking Russian? That's the fucking enemy's language. Like, bitch, what the oh fuck? My God. What the actual fuck? <laughs> like, I understand that Russians have always been a, a target of um, Americans. Well, of hate for the cold good war reasons. and such yeah. uh for very yeah. good reasons you know for very geopolitical things happening to this day yeah. at this instant that the u.s taxpayers are paying for anyway um i i don't think it's a psyop i think people are just being trolls online maybe maybe it is entertaining to watch though like i, I don't even care japan has a very storied history with it implementing russians in their shows like they yes. love russians they love what you know what they actually love they, it's not that they love russians they love blonde women and most of them for some reason got to be from russia and all the anime like or, you, you think about it or america or white, yeah or, or america, america yeah but like now, blue eyed blonde haired if she white haired yeah she's definitely from russia because for yeah. some reason they're they're platinum blonde over in russia i suppose <laughs> Yeah, actually. <laughs> they come from the snow. What color should we make their hair? What color is the snow? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, I'm sh I'm sure the show is actually fine. I'm just being a hater to be a hater because you yeah, like it, Chinoda. You know, like, <laughs> I'm sure it's actually like not that terrible. It's, listen, I might I, watch listen, it. I might I, not. Who knows? I, I saw feet and I see a, a, a little sister who's obsessed with incest. I'm fucking here. <laughs> He's locked in. <laughs> I Bro, am I'm surprised in. you didn't even mention Monogatari. Like, what is wrong with you? Oh, actually, Monster yeah, Mash off right. season. What's? <laughs> I I mean, listen. I, I I'll talk about it. I've only watched the first episode, but I'll talk about it. The, the... no, I don't want to talk about your Suki okay. heat. The Yosobi song is really good. I think the Yosobi I mean, song is Yosobi. really good. Yeah. Like that's that's not fair. It's your they can't miss, John. They yeah. literally yeah. can't miss right now. <laughs> uh, no, the first first episode was good. It had an egg in it. I was happy. <laughs> All right, the uh, wrong, no longer the wrong egg, but an egg nonetheless. World. No longer allowed in another role. What a fun show this is! I I, I really like character. it. Like it's so <laughs> stupid, but at the she same just time, to die. <laughs> it's so I I don't. I don't hate the show, but I I, I kind of hate like the goddess chick, like the I'm gonna help you do the reincarnating bullshit, and he's like, nah, eat cyanide or whatever. <laughs> literally, literally, and she's like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> detoxify, detoxify. He's like, so you won't let me die, huh? And then just <laughs> casually popping pills, <laughs> just eating I'm it like, like what candy. The fuck? Yeah, it's a. So, let's I'm not sure if it's a. On this. I, oh. I mean, we talked about it in the preview episode. Oh, um, right, we did. For anyone who doesn't know what No Longer Allowed in Another World is, uh, it's about a Japanese author who enters into a suicide pact with his lover. I think it's not his wife, but his lover. And then he gets isekai'd by a truck. <laughs> and it's the truck is an actual isekai service. Yeah, it's an it's... actual canon isekai service now. <laughs> it is an actual truck gun. No bullshit. And, and the person who's supposed to help guide this person into the new isekai world is like, yeah, you don't know about the isekai truck service? It's the number one service about helping people who, who don't want to live in their other world get transported to a different world so they can live a better life. And it's like, what? It makes a huge joke about that. I love it's it. an actual love it. so this is why it makes me feel like all right because of the concept and because they added that joke i'm like okay this is obviously a a, a meta like anti isekai show or not anti isekai but a meta like humor type of show which i love meta humor i that's why i like mm. uh community so much and i like like um arrested development so much because I, I love meta humor uh but i think that the concept itself is interesting of like how <laughs> Just like the character where he's like they showed in the preview, uh, where it's like there's that cat girl who gets caught by the, the tree, and then there's typical fantasy like East Sky tropes like, oh, there's tentacles, they're going everywhere. 
And he's like, help me, nya. And then he's like, all right, I guess. Right. He goes up and tries to grab her. He's like, I can't reach <clears throat> it. You're dead. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then he gets caught and is just like, what the fuck? What do we do now? And then apparently he's so poisonous himself from eating all the fucking poison pills that it kills the tree. <laughs> It literally and I'm like, killed a tree monster. This is dumb. This is so dumb. It's so fun. I I I'm genuinely having a fun time with this. Yeah, show. that's why I like it because it's not supposed to be. It's it's not a serious show at all. Also, it's it's also, a meta humor show. John, I gotta say, holy fuck, the author is hot. I mean, oh my god. Woo! I was I was looking. And I'm like. Wait, damn! The wait, author I, of the please. what this is based off, or is there no, a no, the character? Author the, no, character. the main character is oh, the main I, character. Oh, I thought he's like. I thought you said it's like the, the author of the manga or light novel, or whatever this is based off of, is hot. I'm like, I gotta see this now. No, I'm I'm, I'm sure he is, uh, or she, she, whatever. But no, the actual main character who is the author is like, I'm like, yo, you're so suicidal, damn. Damn, oh, please, like, hey, yo, <laughs> <down>. mood, <laughs> mood. Uh, yeah, I definitely think it's a fun show to watch. I'm gonna keep watching it. Yeah, I'm having don't, fun Just don't take the story it. seriously because it's not serious whatsoever. Like, again, the whole... The one, he kills himself within the first 15 seconds of re being reincarnated. He's like, nah, roll again. <laughs> like he, he gets truck gunned while he's trying to commit suicide. When he arrives in the other world, he immediately tries to commit suicide again. Yeah, it's like he shows up. He's like, so this is the afterlife, huh? It's very Western. <laughs> and then that elf lady shows up. Was like, "Welcome to the next world." I am. The, the, he's like, "Oh, so you summoned me here?" It's like, "Yeah." Don't you know about truck coon services? And then she, well, as she's explaining it, he just fucking downs the pill, the pills. He's like, "Cool story, bro." <laughs> Bye. <laughs> it's genuinely entertaining. It is fun. Uh, highly recommend it. <clears throat> Anyways, what's the last thing we got? Yeah, pseudo harem. Uh, I, I I know nothing about this. I've seen it though. Like I've seen the uh, the title of it. And I'm like, well, I don't really like harems too much, but this is a pseudo harem, and it looks like a rom com between two people. So maybe it's good. So, I I saw harem, and I'm like, okay, stereotypical harem, whatever. Not at all. The harem is a single girl. What uh, the whole thing is? They're in a drama club together. And what she does is, uh, whenever the guy says, uh, whatever personality she likes, he likes, uh, she just switches to that personality for whatever reaction. So if he's like, oh, I wonder what Cool Chun would say, and she just switches to cool girl mode, and he's like, I wonder how Cinderay Chun uh, feels about it, and she turns, uh, uh, she puts on pigtails and the, the, uh, the twin tails, <laughs> yeah, bro, classic bro, bro, this Cinderay mode. Bro, this sounds like schizophrenia with extra steps. I mean, she's not schizophrenic. Like, she's just having fun with it. She does like him. That's very obvious. And he's mm. kind of oblivious, but he's uh, still playing along with her because they just have a good friendship. It is a genuinely good bond that they have. It's a fun show. Um, I thought it was going to be a stereotypical bullshit harem. No, it's actually between these two characters that actually care about each other, and they're having fun in their teenage Wait, lives. Wait, you're telling me that this is a pseudo harem? Yeah! <laughs> oh, what? And, like, you can, you can tell, and she, she wants to be an actor uh, in the future, and you can tell she probably does have uh, acting chops because she has uh, different personalities that she can pull out of the bag uh, just like that. It's a fun, cute show. Helps that she's being voiced by a voice actor, too. <laughs> yeah. I might check it out. I don't know. Yeah. If you want a funny little rom with that has a little <laughs> bit of calm in it, yeah, go for it. Like, I don't uh, think it's right. out of the world or anything, but it's worth it. I'd probably think it's better than Alia, then that's for sure. <laughs> the concept alone sounds better than Alia. Sometimes hides her feelings in Russian. Hey, John, put away the bait. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Listen, no Russian. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Anyway, that's it. We've got through our whole list. One of the one of the few times we've gotten to the whole list during one of these monthly dumps. It's because you told me not to put everything. I could have. I know. Had so much more. I know. Well, we've already gone for what two hours already. 
Thank God we wrapped it up before we hit like three hours. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you everyone for stopping by uh, to watch us. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, if you like what you saw and want to see more, let us know what you're currently watching uh, down below as well. Some things that maybe we didn't talk about that we should check out. Um, you can also check down below to find links to all the stuff that Anime Club After does, including our Discord server, which was mentioned several times in this episode. Um, we also have a link to our merch store down there where you can buy Anime Club After Dark merch. Uh, and that's about it. Uh, with that, I have been your host, Alex, and we will see you next time. Say goodnight, guys. Thanks Who's for writing joining us? us. Man, some of these. Oh, continue. Oh. Continue writing your no, title. No, it's a title idea. Why are you? No, behind the scenes, John. <laughs> behind the scenes. Stop. Stop doing that. I thought you were writing a note or something. I don't know. Goodbye. <laughs> I was just, we were speaking about, about Isekai earlier, about Truck Coon. There was a report, or not a report, an article. In oh a, yeah! Did this. you read that? Yeah, I read it, was a, it was an article in a, a like an outfit called Weekly Logistics News, and it's a transportation manager in Japan blaming Isekai for giving trucks a bad reputation. <laughs> it's true though. <laughs> Man, I love shit like that. Anyway, bye.